beautiful day. I am in Marin County and I'm hanging out with Brett Thurber from the new wheel. Hey. Ben, this is so cool. We're on this bike path. We just, it was like a five minute ride and there's, this is the bay, right? This is like the this in is, and out. Well, this is Corte Madera Creek. Corte Madera Creek. So that feeds into the bay. Okay. Well, it's yeah. such a beautiful area, a uh, beautiful time of year. And we're looking at an awesome bike. This is the Gazelle Arroyo C8. And we're looking at the step through. It also comes in diamond, three frame sizes. And this is this is one of the smaller ones. So it's 18 inches right here. Incredibly easy to approach and step through this bike. Okay, we've got the nice swept back handlebars, ergonomic grips, suspension fork here, along with a suspension seat post that is adjustable. That has preload adjust. So that's kind of like how hard you have to hit it before it releases. You also got uh, so, sort of like spring adjustments in here. This is a, the coil fork. What I love about these bikes is just how thoughtfully engineered they are. Really high quality. You've got racks like this that are very sturdy, positioned far enough back that you can still drop that seat. You can put any kind of just quick luggage on there with this triple bungee. But it's also got pannier hangers that are relatively low as well as a pannier blocker. So, you know, this is not just about carrying the battery or putting a trunk bag. This is a very capable bike. It could be used for commuting, for getting around town, even cruising around the neighborhood, or touring and trekking, just because of how efficient it is. It's using the Bosch Performance Line motor, 63 Newton meters of peak torque on this. It's a little bit peppier. You know, Bosch also has the Active Line, a little bit smoother, slower, more relaxed. This is a great middle ground between uh, the, the Active and then the CX, which is high torque. 20 mile per hour top speed on that. The battery pack has been upgraded to the Power Pack 500. And compared to 2016, when I looked at the other Arroyo C8, um, it seems like there are a few little tweaks, but the price is actually a little bit lower. It's $34.99. It is a little bit heavier than last year. So it's about 58.7 pounds. That's, it's getting there. Part of it's because you've got these plastic fenders, the big, you know, sturdy rack, the frame lock. So this is the thing where actually you can see if we do it, we twist the key right here and then you slide this lever. There we go. And see that silver bar? Well, there we go. It would lock in and then you wouldn't be able to roll the bike away. So it's just for quick stops. They call it a cafe lock because you could hit the cafe, grab your croissant, run back out and hopefully your bike's still there or some someone who's strong is going to be trying to run away with that 58 pounds. Last year it was like 57 pounds. And I think part of that's because of the Power Pack 500. You know, the Power Pack 400, maybe it's half a pound lighter. These rack batteries, 6.1 pounds versus the down tube battery, which is about 5.7. So a little bit more weight, but that's what creates this amazing step through wave design um, that I, I definitely appreciate. We've also got a quill stem right there with tool free adjustable angle stem. So you can put it forward, you can bring it back and really dial this in. Those gull wings sort of swept back bars. They aren't super wide, which is which is kind of neat. Like if you're cutting through cars or you're trying to park this in a garage or a tight space, they still give you the comfort and they provide that upright, relaxed feel that Dutch bikes are known for. But you know, they're still narrow enough that you can get through the door. Magura hydraulic rim brakes, four finger tool free adjustable levers again just really nice to have all these adjustments so you can dial it in bring those levers really close if you've got petite body smaller hands that kind of thing integrated headlight love this it's built right onto the fender so as you steer it points exactly where you're going reflectors reflectors on those pedals this is one area where it's like man the pedals are okay they're actually a little bit larger than some of the other platforms i see the rubber can get a little bit slippery but if you if you slide off in the rain or something this isn't going to scrape up your shins as much so it's always compromises adjustable kickstand back here love this thing you don't even need a tool there's like a little ball on the end and you kind of push it in and you can slide that up or down. Um, I definitely appreciate that. Reflective sidewall stripes on the tires, a lot of safety here, and the rear spokes are 13 gauge, so they're a little bit thicker than the front. And I think these are uh, 36 hole rims. So, you know, extra spokes, reinforcement eyelets right there. The tires are a little bit more narrow, which is gonna be efficient, 28 by 1.4 inches you know, versus some of the cruisers and stuff have like two inch, you know, balloon type of things, but that adds weight. That's also not as efficient when you're cruising along. Um, and as I was pedaling, I was trying to, you know, there, 
with the fender and everything, it's, it comes a little bit close. It depends on the frame size, but I love how low this fender goes because it's actually gonna keep your feet and shins a little bit more dry. So Brett, I just wanted to like jump through and hit all the specs, but there's more to this than just the specifications. Just tell me a little bit about Gazelle. I mean, you guys have been carrying them since they came to the States, right? Yeah, so um, they are part of the Pond Bicycle Group. Mm -hmm. um, and so they actually started getting imported by Focus. And now Gazelle has their own um, service and uh, HQ down in Santa Cruz. Cool. Um, Relatively close for you guys. Yeah. So, um, so we got hooked up with them back in 2016. And um, we knew about Gazelle because Gazelle's been building bikes since for a long time. And they're sort of the classic Dutch brand. They're even recognized by the government. They have like a crest and everything. Yeah. And yeah, it's really Royal Dutch Gazelle. Royal that, yeah. And what Royal means is that you only get the Royal designation if you um, have um, been around for, I think, 100 years. Yeah. Wow. And you don't have any ethical lapses. So you pay oh. your taxes and do all this stuff. There we go. And. Um, and then and then you go through a whole review process and they review it you review you every five or ten years or something like this hmm. um to make sure that you're still you know meeting the same standards and the quality standards of course it's a really upstanding company then yeah so it's like it's a very serious privilege to be like a royal brand and they only give one royal designation per sector so gazelle hmm. is it in the netherlands for bicycles and wow. even though there are other bicycle brands in the netherlands that's awesome. So good, good on you, Gazelle. <laughs> and and this bike, you know, why do you guys carry it? You're here. We're in Marin right now. We're in California, very near San Francisco, just across the bridge. Who buys this? Or you know, give give me your take on all this. I mean, when I rode it the first time, I was like, man, this is like the most comfortable bike I've ever ridden. Um, and it's it's a number of things that you you can't really tell just looking at it what it feels like. It's the geometry is really relaxed. Mm -hmm. The seat is a little bit set back yeah. from the pedals, but not like way set back, like some you know foot forward bikes, yeah, or pedal forward bikes. Um, so you're kind of like sitting back on like a couch and riding, mm. while still it's not it's very nimble and fast in yeah. uh, handling. So when I rode it the first time, I was like, wow, this is like this is the most comfortable bike ever. So we <laughs> were at a dealer event, and we like we like talked to all the dealers about it, like this is amazing. You, you, some people didn't quite get it at first because it takes a little getting used to with the internally geared hub. That's right. I didn't even touch yeah. on it. Let's, let's yeah. walk over to the bike. So, you know, Brett's talking about this Shimano Nexus. This is the eight speed and you can shift that at standstill and you'll notice there's no derailleur or anything hanging down. So if the bike tips over, in fact, it looks like this one, you know, there are a couple oh, yeah. little scratches, <laughs> you know, that, that the derailleur is not going to get bumped and it just stays cleaner, maybe requires less maintenance and like longer intervals. And you were also saying that the frame is stiffer. Maybe, can yeah. you tell me a little bit about that? So, yeah, I mean, with this in turn, at first, if you ride this bike for the first time, we always, we will go out with people because there's a little learning curve just mm -hmm. with an internally geared hub. If you've been in the Netherlands or you've been in Europe, you probably are familiar with this. And yeah. so this is not so hard to do. Um, but if you haven't, then you have to get used to the fact that you have to pause your pedaling when shifting, mm -hmm. especially with the electric drive, um, move the power running through your transmission. You have to pause just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And, um, if you don't, it won't click into gear. So, you know, it'll say that you're at the right gear yeah. here, but, until you let off your pressure, pedal pressure, it won't click into gear. And that's a particularly crucial in a place like San Francisco or in the Marin where people are going up really steep hills, they're putting lots of force on the pedals mm -hmm. and, and the motor's putting out a lot of power. That's right. And so unless you let off, it's not gonna perform as well. So that's that's the first thing. Once you, it takes, I think, a couple rides before you're like totally easy second nature. Yeah. But you, but you know, you have to kind of expect that and just kind of you know, I guess just be okay with the first ride, just getting used to it. And mm -hmm. then the second ride, you're like, oh man, this is amazing. Well, the other trade-offs are these tend to weigh a little bit more than a derailleur and, yep. and sprockets, right? Yep. So it's, it, give me the pros and cons again. Is it just more durable or why would you get this versus a derailleur? I mean, simplicity. So it is really simple and you can shift at any time. So in mm -hmm. an urban environment, you come to a stop sign, you don't have to like, you know, be, moving a little bit and getting to the right gear, you can just quickly get to the right gear. And does it shift right away in that case? Right right away. If you're not putting pressure on the pedals, it's it's shifted. Okay. Um, if you're putting pressure, you'd let off for just a, just a moment and it clicks into gear. Okay. Um, 
the other thing I like about it is it's really quiet. Yeah, that's so true. There's there's two hubs that Shimano. Well, there's three hubs, but <laughs> this is the Shimano Nexus Eight. Mm -hmm. There's also the Nexus Seven. The eight is completely silent because it has a roller clutch inside, hmm. and so when you start pressing on the pedals, the it expands, and that's what engages. The oh, hub. that makes sense. So yeah, yeah. you're at a stop sign, you kind of like let off, do the shifting, and then when you start, it kind of like it expands out, expands out, out again. Walks. So hey. the roller clutch, the cool thing about a roller clutch is when you're coasting, you don't hear like we're hearing bicycles roll by here. That's right, yeah. And they're like, you know, you Buzz. it's buzzing <laughs> along with this roller clutch. It's completely silent. It's like it's really cool. So that's one benefit. The Nexus 7 doesn't have a roller clutch. It has paws. Hmm. So you hear a little clicking. Oh, so yeah. I particularly like the Nexus 8. You t you mentioned like uh, just clean and durable. I also like this chain cover. It's yeah. completely enclosed. So there's plastic on the other side. It just seems like it's going to keep water and dirt out. And there's only one sprocket up here. I believe it's 16 tooth mm -hmm. and one back there. So the chain, it's just, it can be tight. And that's these horizontal dropouts with tensioners right here with those nuts. So it's like, it's you're not going to drop the chain. Yeah, it's not no. going to get dirty. I mean, the, the customers that really love this bike, it's are, if you want to, it's really nice, leisurely pace, really simple operation. Not there's like, you know, very little maintenance that the customer has to do. Yeah. Um, they'll come in for us for you know we do have to check the chain tension and make sure everything's aligned but generally you're not lubricating your chain ever because it's fully enclosed it doesn't get dirty yeah there's tensioners built into this right here if you open this up you would see there's two tensioners hmm. and that that you know tightens up the chain as it loosens up a little bit okay um so yeah i mean it's just a really it's a it's kind of a bomb proof setup if you drop your bike there's nothing to bend or break yeah um and the only thing really is you have to get familiar with the with the shifting internally geared and you have to and it's not quite as fast paced shifting as a bike with a derailleur so to help me out with this i've heard that bosch does you know they occasionally do these software updates we got the intuvia right mm -hmm. here and uh I, I heard that they had i mean that has shift detection for normal derailleurs mm -hmm. but they had something in the works that was going to yeah. make it a little bit better for and it's true yeah hubs. no so what they did is they made it so that it's in just you don't you can't tell what's going on but there's a little bit of a, a hiccup when it's when it's powering mm -hmm. it's you can't tell at all when you're riding it it feels just as normal but what that does is it just kind of helps that pause mm. so the Bosch system actually works really well with the Nexus hub some other bikes have like an actual shift sensor mm. um, oh, which that's is right which is good um, but it also can feel a little like on and off yeah, this one's software driven. So, you know, there were, I think Impulse had like a physical shift yeah. sensor inside um, and, and that was kind of nice, but the motor, you know, I, I'm i I'm just a fanboy of Bosch stuff and yeah. I've tried them all and this one is just the most responsive. It's quick, it has a higher cadence RPM matching so you can get up yeah. to 120 yeah. and I'm a more active rider. For a bike like this, I mean, this motor is like more than enough, it seems like oh, yeah. it helps you climb. I did want to touch on how that works, Brett. So it's like, there's a magnet here that passes a little speed sensor. And I guess it's on that it's side, right you here. can't see it, but uh, there's also a cadence sensor, a torque sensor in there. So it's measuring all three signals a thousand times per second. Um, you know, it's listening very closely and you've got those four levels of assist that you can shift through. Maybe I'll touch on that real quick. Yeah, I would just, one last thing I'll just mention. Yeah. Because the Bosch's system with that new software update is so, it's so instant mm -hmm. that it, it pauses so instantaneously. Once you let off, it actually helps it shift even better. That's okay. Yeah. So if it was, if there was a lag, some drive systems that we've tried, there's like, it kind of carries over a lot between pedal strokes. Mm. So it's not quite as responsive to what you're doing when you're pedaling. Yeah. And that would be problematic with the Nexus hub because you would pause your pedaling, but the motor would keep on going and the Nexus hub would have no time to shift. I see. So this one does really like in, in the scheme of things, even with, without a physical shift sensor, it, it works really well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's great to hear that you're out here riding you have customers. You also have the, the Hills, um, in this area. So, you know, probably yeah, get a little bit more. Damn much here but there's there's hills there's hills yeah we <laughs> got hills. Well, there, there's, a <laughs> there's a mountain um you've been up there what is that mountain out there it's that's that's the birthplace of mountain biking that's mount tam that's mount tam yeah is that the marin folks or that's whatever marin. that's like we're in marin we're in marin what is i thinking that's where mountain bikes like started it's where they're born up on a mountaintop not in tennessee though <laughs> okay so back to the display i love that 
The Intuvia display is removable like this. Take it off. There's that little micro USB port on the side, five volt, 500 milliamps. I've tried it with my iPhone. It actually works. Oh, it does. Yeah, and you can try it. I, I bought the things off Amazon, like the little dongle, and, and it does. I get the lightning bolts. It might just be maintaining it, but still, if you have some electronics or whatever, that's just something I like about it. I like how big it is, because if you're sitting back here and maybe your vision isn't so good, I'm nearsighted. You know, I, I like the bigger display. Really easy to reach the button pad. Look at that, huh? <laughs> Twist bell. I'm a big fan of the bells, of course. Bells and whistles. Um, and yeah, just the whole thing, being able to take that battery pack off. Maybe I should do that. Wait, here, let's... Yeah, thanks, Brett. So he's gonna engage that uh, cafe lock and you have to engage it to pull the key out. Yeah, go ahead and then we pull this, this battery out, slides right off. 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour, so roughly 500 watt hours. Nice big handle on the back. That's something I've been calling out more and more because you don't want to drop. These are expensive, right? Yeah, you don't want to drop it. You don't want to drop it. He's like, you don't even want to know. So yeah. The, we the... haven't had actually, I don't think we've had anybody <laughs> drop and break a battery yet. Really? But we don't want to test it. Well, you guys carry mostly Bosch. So that, that got a lot be... of Bosch, yeah. So let's see, now unlock it, boom, we're ready to go. The key stays in there. Why rim brakes, you know, hydraulic rim brakes? Does it, it just clean up the drivetrain area or what's- I love hydraulic rim brakes. <laughs> yeah? Tell I me why. I love hydraulic rim brakes because they are, the pads last a really long time. Mm -hmm. They're difficult for the shop to, to set them up properly. It takes some time. So our mechanics, like we have, that's like, that's like the, uh, it's like the a specialty. Fade, the, what do you call it when you, uh, <laughs> progression? I don't know. When you're, you're, uh, you're breaking someone in. Oh like, yeah. Like, that's what we put them on is, is adjusting these brakes. Because, but the cool thing is once, once they're adjusted, yeah, they're, you don't have to readjust them. Okay. They're not like hydraulic disc brakes that can go out. The pistons go out of adjustment a little bit. Hmm. The pads last longer. They're really quiet yeah. in all weather. Oh. Um, and you get good. mechanical I mean, advantage. I mean, yeah. you're way out at the edge of the wheel. So. I would, yeah. And what I tell people is hydraulic is the key word. Hmm. So cape, you know, hydraulic rim brakes and disc brakes, they're all really, they're going to be great. Versus mechanical. Mechanical, that's where things get, is not, that's lesser then. So some people say, oh, I want a disc brake. And they point to a bike that has a cable disc brake. It's like, oh. And you're much better off with a hydraulic rim brake than a cable disc brake, in my opinion. Excellent. The I only, agree with the you. The only drawback I will say is, um, you know, you eventually, if you're putting thousands and thousands and thousands of miles on your brakes, yeah, you will eventually wear out your rims. Oh, and you need to replace your rims. Scrape up the rims a little. It's just sort of yeah. there's dust and stuff being driven into that. Yeah, there's. Oh wow, look at that. There's there's um, wear indicators on the. Rims. Oh yeah, right here. Rim subject to wear, and it has an arrow. So it's like on cars where the brakes do they start to squeak or is there some sort of you can't really know you just have to you know what we do when we check in a bike is just look at the rims and make sure that they're not caved and you'll start seeing the rims start looking like this a little bit hmm. it's time to replace them and i don't want to be a fear monger here or anything but i think the reason that a lot of mountain bikes don't have rim brakes is because you're going down hills a lot really fast and if you heat up those rims too much it can like pop melt the tube inside potentially potentially it's not something that happens it's not something actually you know there's a there's a whole segment of the industry that thinks like rim brakes is a much better application for like road bikes where you're going 50 miles an hour down the, you know down a descent huh. than a disc brake okay because the disc brakes do heat up too much whereas rim brakes there's so much more surface area to to heat that's up. right to cool so, off too when it's we've never seen any issue with that you see hydraulic rim brakes on a lot of european tour trekking bikes yeah and city bikes it also happens to work really well with with um, internally geared hubs oh because you don't have to have tensioners and all sorts of crazy dropout designs well, and that's a good point so i'd say probably the primary reason that's for me is like you have this horizontal dropout yeah. and so the hub can be moving back and forth and if the disc brake is connected to that hub it's moving which means that the mount for the calipers it has to somehow slide too it. it gets complicated it, it gets which very is it's totally solvable <laughs> this is this is easier and a little less expensive frame design okay. to do i mean fundamentally yeah it, it costs more to to do a frame that has all the perfect tolerances to make that work i'm so glad you're here with me talking about this getting yeah. getting this different perspective um i, I want to just run through the display for anyone who hasn't seen it before we press the power button. I love that it also swivels. We've got a battery indicator, five ticks. That's 20% increments. It'd be nice if Bosch had a percentage in my opinion, but you do have a range estimator. So we press the I here or here. We cycle through trip stats like the odometer, trip distance, clock, max speed, average speed, trip time, and range. And when you get to range, you arrow up with the plus 
and go to Eco, it calculates on the fly. It's like, well, how have you been riding over the last mile? How much battery remains? What level did you pick? And it says, well, we think you can go 86 miles if you keep at it just like this. Now, I mean, this battery, the Powerpack 500 on, on the Bosch specifications, it says something like 25 to 115 miles. Yeah. You know, that's a huge range. There are many factors, yeah. but the bike adjusts to you. So, you know, look at that and, and use that to determine how far you can go. Eco Tour Sport Turbo, Turbo is the highest. It's also a little bit more loud. You hear like, Ree! you know, the, the sprocket on, on these bikes spins at 2.5 revolutions for every crank arm revolution. So I find it to be very responsive and it feels very fluid. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, there's, you're gonna use the battery more quickly. Um, if you wanna change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour, hold reset and I, it gets in you into the settings menu. If you wanna turn on those lights, there's that light bulb button. And that's really cool because we do have the Spinninga Brasa back here with a big reflector. Just safety is such an important thing. I like how handsome this bike is. It looks good for like men and women or, or whatever, um, but it's a little darker. So having those lights built in like that is, is so good. Brett, do you have anything else to say about the display or you know about the battery or any of that stuff? 500 is better than four. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There we go. It's, it's cool. People are, I mean, people didn't complain about the range on the 400. And yeah. this was our most popular bike last year wow. for the step through segment. Hmm. Um, but 500 is better. And is it stiffer? You were telling me something like, yeah, yeah we were shaking it. Cause sometimes you put the battery weight up high and towards the rear. Ideally, everything would be low like the motor. Yeah. But this, then you, Yeah. what do you think? This frame is really cool. <laughs> do you want to shake it real quick? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so sweet. This this frame is like is very very cool. They they totally the geometry is the same, so it rides like the 2016 Arroyo, mm -hmm. but the frame is completely redesigned, which took a lot of work. Hmm. Um, this to do this sort of thing with aluminum, where you know it's all all welded seams. This is this is these are different parts, but it's all welded together and, and polished. Really. Um, oh. So it's that's that's difficult to do um, and then it's much stiffer so they stiffened it all up so it doesn't have you know the 2016 uh, Arroyo when you did this this does a little bit but it, yeah. it would do it more mm -hmm. and a lot of step through bikes like the back end wiggles a it's one bit. of the trade otherwise it gets more and more weight yeah. to really beef up the bike do you know is there a max weight on this I don't want to put you on the spot but I it's, don't know off the top of my head y have you sent this out with some bigger customers and had no problems or yeah yeah I mean we have other bikes that are more like if you're over 250 50 pounds yeah. there's there's other bikes like from Reese and Muller that would be better suited for you. Yeah, but, you guys carry them too. So yeah. it's like a more premium like stir and those are usually heavier. <laughs> yeah, well they and they rate them for so they actually have a bike that's 350 pounds weight limit. Hmm. Um right. they would not say that I don't think this would be said to be 350 pounds. It could okay. do it. It's not like it's going to crumble or anything. Yeah. It's just not like they, they, in Europe, they're a lot more sophisticated on this. So like the brake pads, the tires, the rims, the, the drive system, I mean, the transmission, all of that stuff is actually in the frame, obviously, is really kind of uh, considered when they decide it's going to be 350 pounds versus 250 pound weight limit. And that's gear plus rider. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, earlier I was like thicker spokes, reinforcement eyelets, like reinforced frame. This is still... You know, it's it's easy in the world of electric bikes to be like, oh, what's the difference between this and a cheaper bike? It's like, well, this is gonna last longer. Yeah. It's it's actually sturdier. The spokes aren't gonna start to like go out of true and yeah. stuff like that. It's it's a better bike. I mean, the one thing I will say about Gazelle is like their reputation is everything. They don't, they really do not mess around with their reputation. So like, they talk about the fact that they paint all their bikes in house. Oh, that's right. Yeah, they have a guy, and there's like a big glass window I yeah. hear, and people walking by on the street can see it. Their reputation, I mean, they're, they are to have that royal designation. Like you can't put a bike out there on the street and have it like, you know, have a bunch of warranty issues and have the paint cracking off and all this stuff. It's just, yeah. it's just not appropriate. Like they have, a, they have a heritage that they can't just like throw away because they want to hit a certain price point. Yeah. Um, so that ha that goes into like the amount of energy that they put in redesigning a frame like this. Yeah. It goes into the paint job. I mean, you, you, this bike is designed to be like used on a daily basis, thrown up against bike racks and the paint is actually better than some than car paint in many instances it's 10 layers of paint it's i like, heard they have like a marine tank and they dunk yeah. it in they have a uv room where they it's, they seriously put them through it's sophisticated so 
And I mean, it makes sense. I mean, why do you want a situation where the bike comes in? It? It's the bike should ride and look really good for five, ten years mm. or more. You know, it shouldn't. I, I hate when I see bikes that come back that like, you know, are all chipped up and all this stuff. It's like, oh no. Well, and there, there's a price to consider. You pay yeah. a little bit more for this, but they do have the two year comprehensive warranty. Plus, I, I don't know the frame warranty. I know it's at least five and maybe depending on where you are in the world, they, they just are really, it's just a solid brand. And now that they're using, I, maybe they always use Bosch, but I'm thinking about Focus and, yeah. and Kalkoff. Um, I, I really, you know, I feel like the Bosch system is going to be around. They're going to be supporting these batteries for a long time. So the bike's gonna last, and then you also have the option to, to keep it going with new yeah, battery. You're not, you're not relying on Gazelle to support your motor system, mm -hmm. which is it's nice. I mean, we think about that too when we decide what bikes brands to carry. Um, but you know, they, they do, they have a, and they do have a lot of custom stuff, like the light integration and the, the stem. Yeah, but this have, is Bush and Miller actually. So, yeah. And there's like a little, there's a voltage. So it, it feels like you could actually get in there. This is a little less is disposable Bush, than some of the other bikes. Yeah, but it is made for Gazelle. So you can't, you can't just go to Bush and Miller and I like, we can't go to our distributor and say, hey, I want to order one of these lights. We got to get it from Gazelle. It looks like, is there like a flash mode or something? Here? No, this is an adjustment. So you can adjust the angle of your light. Oh, whoa, look at that. It actually angles it down. How cool. And then these, do you have to adjust these like perfectly with each other? Cause it said something about stiffness. Yeah, you need to adjust them like one click on each side. Okay, okay, well, cool. That's, yeah. I'm not, you know. There's all kinds of forks and stuff out there. Coil, I think, tends to be pretty quick. It's nice to have any adjustment because this, you know, there's no preload or yeah. lockout or anything, but you do have that stiffness. You know, internally routed cables, the whole thing. We've been talking about it for a while. It's nice to get the perspective, but maybe you should just hop on and... Yeah. Um, can I follow you on this bike too? Yeah. First to get, we'll just ride up there a little ways. You want me to ride this? Yeah, I want to see what you look I'm like a on it. Tall on it. <laughs> That's, That's the only problem. That's okay. Is a, this is a 46 centimeter frame. This is the smaller one. Also, there's the four amp battery charger, so it's a little bit faster. Weighs about 1.7 pounds. Um, I like the Bosch chargers. It's easy to toss into a bag or panniers if you had them. And with that larger battery, it just means less time between rides. And I'm on the city zen right here, or citizen. Go for it. Notice my pausing. <laughs> yeah. Pause, shift. Pause, shift. Got a bumpy section here. Really smooth, it's totally quiet. Okay, we trade off? Yeah. Very nice. Thanks, man. Okay, guys, I'm going to hop on this thing. I'm going to start out in eco mode just because it's, you know, it's kind of the smooth, quiet, most efficient. Um, I'm also going to shift down right now. So all the way down. Sweet. I let off. I actually heard it click. Yeah. Actually, that was cool. Now, that's the thing you learn. I mean... You'll notice if you aren't in gear, it has a click, 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 click sound. Yeah. It's telling you, okay, time to pause. Oh, I have <laughs> and heard then once that. It clicks into gear. It's, it's... I'm going to try to show that. Okay, so here we go. We're pedaling. So you can hear it whining as I get into those higher RPMs. Um, and that's when it's like, okay, shift up. And in fact, there's even a little arrow on this display that sh shift assist or shift recommendation. And that's telling you, okay, go ahead and shift gears. So I'm gonna do that. This time I'm gonna sh pedal hard and shift. There we go. And I had to let off before it would actually uh, shift into gear. I'm gonna take it up to turbo mode. There's our top speed, 20 miles per hour. Thanks. Cool. Very nice. Well guys, we're heading back to the shop. I think that's about it. That's the Gazelle Arroyo C8. For the full write-up on this, all the specs and measurements I got, we'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. 
Brett, thank you so much. What's your website? Newwheel.net. Newwheel.net. And these guys have some great YouTube videos too. When they get new bikes, they usually do overviews and stuff. So check it out. Uh, have fun. Ride safe.